I'll be back tomorrow. Get the hot water ready in the bath. This is what my husband, who disappeared three years ago, told me when he called me for the first time in a long time. Without warning, he left me the divorce papers and disappeared with his mistress. How much do you think I was hurt that day three years ago? I can't believe the nerve of my husband to contact me with impunity. But I am different from that time. I get it. Stifling my anger, I calmly replied and hung up the phone. I can't wait to see what my husband will look like when he gets home. I hope he'll feel the same way I did then. Suck it up. I am Mary, 30 years old and I have an office job. I met my husband Dean through a social networking site. It all started when I found out on there that Dean was hosting a meetup for fans of my favorite band, and I contacted him. The band was not that famous, and all the people around me had never even heard of them. I had always attended gigs alone and had been looking for someone to talk to. The place where the meetup was to be held was close to my house, so I contacted him on the spur of the moment. Dean returned my message very politely and even gave me directions to the location of the meetup. Dean, the moderator on the day of the meetup, was attentive to all participants and kept the place lively. I was also nervous to attend the event, but thanks to Dean I was able to enjoy talking with many people. I parted ways at the station with the people I met that day and we are still good friends. But at the time, Dean and I were the only ones who took the same direction of the train. As we talked, it became clear that Dean was the same age as me, and we had a lot in common. Not only in terms of bands we liked, but also in terms of the music and radio we usually listened to, and the conversation became quite lively. I had never met anyone with such good taste, and I think I was already in love with Dean from this point on. We agreed to meet at the next gig, and I got off the train first as we arrived at the nearest station. I went home and messaged Dean to thank him, and he politely replied again. After that, we had endless conversations and sent messages to each other every day. I had been looking forward to Dean's reply for some time. A month later at a concert, Dean confessed his feelings to me and we decided to go out. I thought it must be my one-sided love, so when he confessed, my face turned red with surprise and happiness. Dean was laughing at me. Every day that I was dating Dean was nothing but happiness. Dean is a very considerate person who would never say anything that would hurt me. I can't tell you how many times he made me cry with surprises because his first priority was to make me happy. I also felt I could do anything for Dean. After a year of dating, we decided to get married and his proposal came as a surprise. While dining at a restaurant, he suddenly handed me a large bouquet of flowers. And when I accepted the proposal, our mutual friends appeared from the back to congratulate me. I was so happy, I couldn't stop crying. After marriage, Dean and I continued to spend time together as lovers as if nothing had changed. Dean is actively involved in housework despite his busy work schedule and celebrates wedding anniversaries and birthdays in a big way. I was so glad I married this man. I was even a little scared that I should be this happy. However, after two years of marriage, Dean gradually began to act strangely. He had always been a busy man at work, but now he had to work overtime and on holidays and travel more than ever. On the worst days when I woke up, he was already gone, and there were days when he would come home in the middle of the night, and we hardly saw each other, even though we lived together. I had been up all night waiting for the band's album to come out so I could listen to it with Dean, but he never came home, and before I knew it, I had fallen asleep on the couch. He didn't have a lot of days off, so I was afraid that he would get sick. Why don't you ask the company for some time off? I had never spoken to Dean about his work before, but once, when he came home late at night because I was worried about his health, I said that to him without thinking much about it. A woman like you shouldn't talk when it comes to my job. The words that came back from Dean were quite cold. This was the first time Dean had ever spoken to me so coldly. Is he too busy at work and stressed out? Dean has since become a different person. Why didn't you have breakfast ready? I once woke up one day to Dean's voice. I thought I had slept too late because it was my day off from work, so I jumped up and looked at the clock, but it was only 5 in the morning. You know, I've been meaning to tell you this for a long time, but seriously, you are zero when it comes to being a wife. When I went to the living room, Dean spat that at me and went to work. 
How unreasonable of him to be angry at me for not having breakfast ready at 5 in the morning. More importantly, I had never dreamed that Dean had thought of such a thing. I also work and certainly the housework will not be perfect. I was so shocked that I spaced out for a while. Maybe I shouldn't be so busy at work. I knew I would have to work harder than ever at housework and wait for Dean to settle down at work until he was as good as he was when we first got married. I am sure that one day he will return to his former gentle self. I believe that and did everything I could to make the house a peaceful home for Dean when he returned. But no matter what I did, Dean always gave me the cold shoulder. So I tried my best even though I felt like my heart was about to break. One day, while checking Dean's pockets to take his suits to the cleaners, I found a pair of women's earrings. Obviously, it is not mine. The moment I saw the earrings, I was convinced that all of Dean's previous actions had been a lie. He's not busy at work, he's meeting with his affair partner. That's why he's not at home at all. I felt ridiculous and very miserable at the same time for having cared about Dean so much. I stayed up that day waiting for Dean to come home. When Dean came home in the morning, I confronted him with the earrings. Whose earrings are these? It was in your suit pocket. It is not good to get angry from the beginning and start fighting. So I asked in a calm tone of voice, wanting to discuss the matter properly. Maybe I was thinking too well that Dean would panic and apologize. Oh, it's my girlfriend's earrings. Thank you. I'll give it back tomorrow. Dean was unfazed and tried to take the earrings. I was surprised at Dean's attitude. There was no sign of panic, and Dean spoke as if it was normal that he was having an affair. Huh? You're not going to apologize or anything? Or don't you realize you're doing something wrong? Oh, we are married, aren't we? I unintentionally accused Dean in a strong tone. Shut up. That's what I'm trying to say. Can't you see that you're the cause of this? He headed for the bathtub, but of course I had not heated up the water. No wife would heat up the water in the bath and wait to discuss an affair, right? But Dean came to the living room again. Why haven't you heated up the water in the bathtub? You can't even do that? And he blames me. I didn't know what to do anymore. He has no intention of discussing or stopping the affair. There were so many things I wanted to say, but I felt like there was no point in saying them. I couldn't say anything back and all I could do was cry. I decided to go to my bedroom in silence, crying on my bed, and without me falling asleep, morning came. Dean did not come into the bedroom that night. When I left the bedroom, Dean was already gone in the house. Did he leave in anger? Stunned, I enter the living room and discover something shocking on the table. There already was a divorce document signed by Dean and a short letter he left behind. Goodbye, sign these and send them out. That was all the letter said. I rushed to contact Dean's phone, but he seemed to refuse my calls, so I couldn't contact him. Is it possible for a couple to quit so easily? Was it wrong that I blamed him? That day I took off work and called my in-laws. However, my in-laws have been calling Dean too, and he is not answering the phone. None of our mutual friends have been able to contact him. I also called Dean's company, and to my surprise, he resigned two weeks ago. On second thought, it is also strange to have divorce papers ready in the middle of the night. Perhaps this was planned. As for life after that, I honestly don't remember much. I can no longer listen to the songs of the band I loved so much. I could no longer go to work and took a leave of absence. The emotional scars did not heal easily and I was unable to leave the house for many months. My mother, who was worried about me, came to my house and agreed to stay with me for a while. Three years later, I was finally able to return to my normal life. Maybe I can start moving forward again. One day, as I was beginning to feel this way, the phone rang as I was cooking dinner at home. It's a call from an unknown number. Fearfully, I answered the phone and heard Dean's voice, a voice I thought I would never hear again. I was so surprised that I thought my heart would stop. Dean, on the other end of the phone, is now saying these words. 
I'll be back tomorrow. Get the hot water ready in the bath. He said, I couldn't believe it. Has he forgotten about what happened three years ago? How the heck is he going to come back and face me? I don't understand. I had a lot to say, but I said, I get it, and hung up the phone. Then the next day, I received another call from Dean. Hey, what happened to our house? It's our house, right? Explain to me what this is all about. Dean ranted furiously. Yes, the place where the house we lived used to be is now a construction site. Our house? What are you talking about? That's my house. Oh, I forgot to boil the water in the bath. When I say this, Dean takes his anger out on me even more. Your husband came home, but what's with that attitude? Where the hell are you? I'm right behind you. Also, you're not my husband, you're my ex-husband. Dean turned around and there stood me, my in-laws, and my lawyer. Dean panics as he sees us and loses his grip on the phone. Why the hell are mom and dad here? As Dean tried to run away while saying this, my in-laws and lawyer surrounded Dean. Mr. Anders, we need to talk to you, so let's have this discussion at the office. The lawyer said. My in-laws gripped Dean's arm gingerly and started walking. Dean was flailing around, resisting the whole time. Hey, Mary, what does this mean? He shouted at me, but I ignored him. Dad, Mom, you're not on my side? But my in-laws only looked at Dean with cold eyes. I am sure they have a lot to say, but they must be holding back until they get to the office. We walked about five minutes to the lawyer's office and sat Dean down. Here are the documents regarding alimony. The lawyer spoke matter-of-factly about the fees. I ain't got the money to pay for this crap. Dean quickly tore up the papers, but soon the lawyer brought out some extra copies on his desk. I guess he had prepared several copies in anticipation of this happening. You should pay alimony to Mary for cheating on her and causing her emotional distress. Mary's heartbreak cannot be mended with money, but... But it's the least you can do, the lawyer said, glaring at Dean. Don't be silly. We'll just go back to our lives again. What happened to the house in the first place? Dean ignores the lawyer's words and turns to me and my in-laws to ask. The house is mine. Did you forget all that after three years? I don't want the house I spent time in with you anymore, so I've decided to tear it down and turn it into a parking lot. The house where I spent time with Dean originally belonged to my parents, who had acquired the entire lot. My parents gave it to my husband and I, but it was in my name. Dean was kind to me at that time. You got it from your parents, so it should be in your name. But I guess he doesn't remember that anymore. I don't remember that. If you're going to turn it into a parking lot, you're going to split some of that revenue with me, right? Dean makes demands that make no sense. Hey, Dean, how long are you going to be so boring? What you did is unforgivable. You're 30 years old, and you aren't even aware of that. You're really a good-for-nothing kind of guy. You don't consider me your son anymore? All you can do is pay the alimony, right? Get on with it and sign the papers. We're cutting you off from us, as of today. My father-in-law passed down judgment on Dean. Next to me, my mother-in-law is sobbing, heavily. Your father is right. The only way left for you is to pay your alimony and be gone from our sight. As I said that, he replied, I'm sure you were a little glad for me to be back, even though you were lonely and alone. Mary, you don't have to be so tough. Dean said with sarcasm, but I laughed. Huh? No one here is lonely or happy at all. I never wanted to see your face again for the rest of my life. I'd be glad if I could get you to pay me alimony, though. I said. And now, Dean was crying. Don't say that. Mary, I'm sorry. Let's start over again. He said. I was dismayed to see Dean. Don't be silly. There's no way I'm going to start over. Back then, you served me those divorce papers right then and there. And besides, I'm already remarried. 
as I say that? I'm her husband, Jude. My lawyer introduced himself. When Dean disappeared, I was too depressed to do anything. It was the friends I met at the meetup where I met Dean who helped me at that time. They came to my house every day and listened to me. One of them introduced me to Jude, my lawyer, and now husband. With Jude, we discussed with our friends whether we should try to locate Dean. Jude advised me that if I wanted a divorce or wanted to file for alimony, then we should look for Dean. I didn't want to start over again. I didn't want to see his face. We agreed that if he showed up someday, we would charge him a huge fee. It was also Jude who advised me to turn the house I lived in with Dean into a parking lot. Jude advised me as a lawyer, but also provided emotional support. After several meals with friends, he and I became friends and decided to go out with each other. And we just got married a few months ago. Huh? Remarried? So what am I supposed to do? Dean started ranting like a child. I don't know. You brought this upon yourself. Why don't you just sign the papers and go to your beloved mistress? I said, and Dean threw his hands up in defeat and signed the document begrudgingly. Come on, can we please just split it up? Dean looked at me, his voice strained. No one is going to do you any favors, right? Make sure you pay her on time. Before I could answer, my father-in-law threatened Dean, and Dean took his bag and ran from the office as if to escape. After Dean was gone, my in-laws bowed deeply and apologized. Until he pays the alimony properly, I will take the responsibility as a parent. Mary, I am so sorry for the long wait. Jude then responded. Now that he has already signed the paperwork, I'll do what I can to make sure he pays. So thank you for your time today. Dean gave us the runaround at first, but Jude firmly made him pay in a lump sum. According to Jude, Dean has no savings at all, and he has to make do with a day job to make ends meet. The alimony was paid with a loan. He had been living like a pimp after he left that day. The affair was with a woman who seemed to have very good money, and he was completely spoiled. However, Dean was not willing to work at all, and the woman got fed up with him and kicked him out of the house. Dean, who had not worked for a long time and had no savings, seemed to be walking aimlessly on the street and came up with the idea of coming back to me. He probably thought he could use me in such a convenient way. I think I was able to fight Dean because Jude was next to me, and I am stronger than I was then. After the fee was paid, I blocked any communication from Dean. I don't know what he is doing anymore. Jude and I are enjoying our honeymoon. Jude doesn't say anything if my housework isn't perfect. It's okay to get better at it, little by little. I'm not very good at housework either, so if anything, you've been doing all the work for me, and I have no excuse. He'd say. Sometimes we have small fights, but he never raises his voice and listens to me sincerely. Since marrying Jude, I can finally listen to my favorite band again. It seems that Jude had never heard of it, but when he heard the song, he liked it. I will be going to a concert next month with my friends and Jude. I am now spending my days looking forward to that day.